Dear family, I hope you're doing well. Did you hear the story about how True Mother's own mother and grandmother were nearly killed one day when going to the village market? The year was 1919. It was early spring and still bitterly cold. We're in Anju. It's a small village outside of Pyongyang. True Mother's mother, Hong Sun Er, was barely five years old. She was being carried on the back of her mother, Zhou Wan Mo. This was a normal day, just like any other day, shopping at the outdoor market. You can imagine all types of people were there, men, women, children, families buying and selling items. Then, out of nowhere, from across the market, a guy starts shouting, Teguk Dongnip Manse! That means Korean independence, Manse. Everything went quiet. Then again, the same man, throwing a Korean flag up into the air, repeated, Teguk Dongnip Manse! At that moment, the entire crowd erupted. It was like a spark that lit off a bomb. Everyone started pulling out their Korean flags, shouting, Korean independence! Korean independence! Manse! Even Grandmother Jo, right there in the middle of the crowd, still with her daughter on her back, was waving and shouting. But what happened next? was really scary. Let me read. Within moments, the demonstrators' ears were assaulted by the sound of whistles and boots. With batons and rifles, dozens of policemen converged upon the market. They mercilessly struck everyone in their path, right and left. People were beaten to the ground, bloodied. The policemen did not distinguish between man or woman young or old. They were beating everybody. So what happened to Grandmother Jo and her daughter? Well, we are journeying through this memoir, The Mother of Peace, by Dr. Hak Jahan Moon. It's the story of how God miraculously created the environment for the greatest daughter in human history to be born. You know, in the last message, I mentioned how we will be spiritually reawakened by uniting in heart with the Mother of Peace. But why is that true? How is that possible? It's because by becoming one with goodness, you inherit that goodness. By becoming one with godly things, you become godly. True Mother herself has lived this way. You know, before she is a mother, she is a daughter. A daughter who inherited the incredible foundation of peace, even though it was at the risk of her life. The title of today's message is Inheriting Peace, Even at the Risk of Your Life. First of all, in order to truly appreciate this story, we have to keep in mind that throughout human history, there has been a heavenly force and an evil force, and humanity has been stuck in the middle. Essentially, we are all good people, seeking the same goodness and happiness, and yet this evil force has made mankind capable of terrible things. Human history is the story of our heavenly parent helping us untangle ourselves from this mess and establish a new lineage of peace. And from the very midst of this historical struggle, there have emerged incredible men and women who are willing to risk their lives for the sake of others so that true peace may reign. Think of it. Think of all those who were beaten by the police in Anju Market that day. They were simply waving Korean flags in the air. You have to ask yourself, first of all, where did they buy these flags? Do you think people were selling Korean flags at the market? No. Not when Korea was under Japanese occupation. Each of those flags was secretly hand-sewn by their owners. And why did they all happen to have those precious flags with them that day at the market? It's because they were always secretly carrying them, waiting for that day, longing for that day, that day when there might be a small chance, even at the risk of their lives, to reclaim their sovereignty, to reclaim their inheritance for the sake of peace. And right there in the middle of the market, 
in the middle of this protest was True Mother's grandmother, waving her flag high. We are reading from the Mother of Peace, and we are diving right here into the story in chapter 1. Let us continue. It was the first day of March, 1919, the beginning of spring, by the lunar calendar's marking of seasons. The temperature remained below freezing, and the people of Anju, a village in Pyongyang province of what is now North Korea, were experiencing a biting frost. A woman braved the cold to cook her family's morning meal. From the back of a cupboard, she carefully took out an item wrapped in plain cotton cloth, and by the light of a fire, an array of sunshine shining through a crack under the door, the woman untied the cloth to reveal another, larger, more substantial cloth, one with a red and blue yin-yang symbol on a white background. As she laid it out on the table, the design on the cloth came into full view. It was a Korean flag. Just think how precious this flag was to Grandmother Jo. These flags were not permitted, so she had to be very careful. It was carefully wrapped up and hidden, not in a cupboard, but behind a cupboard. As Grandmother Jo caressed the precious cloth of her nation's flag, her daughter started to wake up. It was time for breakfast. Grandmother Jo put away the flag, and then shared a morning meal together with her husband and child. Later that afternoon, Grandmother Jo heads off to the market, carrying her daughter wrapped up in a bundle on her back. True Mother goes on to describe their journey there. A narrow gravel path to the Anju Market meandered through her village. It joined a larger road on which she met others making their way. A farmer leading a cow, a young man carrying a heavy load, an A-frame carrier, a mother with a bundle on her head. Some were walking at a leisurely pace, others quickly, all heading for the market. You know, once they arrive, they start to do their shopping. Grandmother Jo was in the midst, in the middle of the market, at a vegetable stand when her daughter started to wake up. Her daughter starts to move, and Grandmother Jo turns around to catch her eye. And time stops for a moment, right there in the middle of a noisy market under an icy blue sky. In that moment, when their eyes meet, Grandmother Jo smiles at the beauty of her daughter. To the little girl, that smile must have felt like a warm ray of sunshine shining deep into her heart. It was a moment of peace. That's when it happened. Korean independence! Manse! As if she were a runner, hearing the sound of a starting gun, Grandmother Jo quickly pulled the Korean flag from her bosom, waving it vigorously. She joined the crowd, shouting, Manse! Victory for 10,000 years! With all her strength! Victory! Victory! Korean independence, Manse. She literally ran straight into the middle of the commotion, even with her young daughter on her back. Amazing. The first shout had been a signal, and all at once people in the market were taking out Korean flags and vigorously waving them high ab above their heads. From every corner of the open market, cries of Korean independence, Manse, reverberated. She had been eagerly awaiting this day. She had stayed up many nights with her daughter, sewing her nation's flag, her hands shaking. Sitting under the kerosene lamp, she spoke to her daughter about Korea, its people, its faith, its ageless traditions, and the meaning of the Manse independence movement. Listening to her mother, the little girl nodded her head taking in everything. Within moments, the demonstrators' ears were assaulted with the sounds of whistles and boots, with batons and rifles. Dozens of policemen converged upon the market. They mercilessly struck everyone in their path, 
right and left. People were beaten to the ground, bloodied. The policeman did not distinguish between man or woman, young or old. Desperate to protect her daughter, this mother had no choice but to hold back her tears and retreat. Think of how much she must have wanted to remain, hoping that she could make a difference. But she turned back to protect her daughter. And it is lucky that she did so, for that precious daughter, Hong Sune, would one day give birth to the only begotten daughter of God. All of this was preparation for a different time. All of this investment and so much more would pour into the life of our true mother at her very birth and throughout her childhood. Something told Grandmother Jo that it was not yet time for her nation to rise. Wow. It told her that in the future of Korea, a woman would be born with an unprecedented destiny, a woman who would break the mold of this fallen world. With this light of hope in her heart, she endured the humiliation of that afternoon. Why is True Mother, who was not herself there, able to tell such detail in this story? These were important moments for Grandmother Jo, so don't you think that the details of that day were repeated to her daughter and later to our True Mother so that she would know her own history? so that we all may know this history? This is the root of mother's birth. Amazing. Mother continues, As I write these words in 2019, the centennial of the March 1st independence movement, I am pursuing my forebearer's dream, the dream of the ages, the completion of God's providence of salvation throughout the earth. Incredible. Spurred on by the thought of my grandmother Joe crying manse for the independence and salvation of our nation, I burned with a youthful passion for saving humanity and building a peaceful world. I have always held high the banner of peace, inheriting the March 1st independence movement's noble spirit of nonviolence and self determination. Because I lived with this sense of urgency, I found myself accomplishing what I would never have imagined possible. Throughout my life, I have done my utmost to fulfill all the tasks that have come to me. I have striven to dedicate my life to living for the sake of others with one heart and one will. I have never given my body the rest it needs. Many were the times I neglected to eat or sleep. Mother lived with this sense of urgency. She chose to inherit from this root, from the circumstances of her childhood. Mother comes from this kind of a line. Through this story in this book, you will come to know that true mother inherited the fight for peace even at the risk of her life. So where do we come from? Where were you born? How did you come to be where you are now watching this message? What is this story to you? Who are these people to you? This is your mother. Inside here, your grandmother and your great-grandmother. From this story, you will learn how much they put at risk to create the foundation for you, for all of us, to be spiritually reborn. Those of you who read this book and study the life of Father and Mother Moon will be inspired, yes, it will teach you so many things, but we need to come alive. We need to come alive. Think of what God is doing here. Don't read this book like it's a story of someone else. You must read these words carefully as if they are your history. If this is mother's biography, then it is your biography. It is your history. Do you understand? That means you. You are connected to this story, this history. You are connected to this root. This is your mother, your grandmother, your great grandmother who went through this kind of ordeal and so many more at the risk of their lives time and time again for our sake so that we might be able to squash the evil forces of history so that we might be able to live in peace. 
I want to be an inheritor of this peace. I am an inheritor of this peace, despite the risks it has involved in my life. It is nothing compared to my mother's life. Thank you, true mother. Be an inheritor of this story as your story. Be an inheritor of this mission as your destiny. Be an inheritor of this lineage of peace. Think about it. And God bless you.